Yeah, because uh, we've been chatting really for years, right? <laughs> yeah, since about uh, 2011, I think. Yeah, I really miss our conversations because you're such an insightful person and having a conversation with you guarantees that we're going to get to the key crunch of each <laughs> item. I love that. I just love it. Oh, well, I feel the same way about you, actually. <laughs> Uh, that was the most fun, I think, about I know. Oh, both the bacon and beyond. Yeah, something. all our projects. Yeah. yeah, that was the most exciting bit to me too. I couldn't wait for our catch up, you know, with the calls yeah. we do just with each other and just talk about stuff and the other yeah. co-creators. I missed you <laughs> and our conversations, and of yeah. course, we're going to do more of these too. We 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 touched base this morning. And we talked about a little bit how un unsettling last night was as a yeah. sleeping. Not, not a got, good night for sleeping. Not a good night for sleeping. And we're talking about October, the night of October something. <laughs> what is it today? Seven. Sixth. It was the night yeah. of October 6th. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or early morning, the 7th. Yeah. Yes. Um, the light, night of six, morning seven, but it has kind of been building as well. I mean, we talked about a little bit about it last week and we felt similar energy, but it went as intense. I yeah. felt that last night they were like, you can't really ignore them energies, right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And it wasn't bad. No, it wasn't. It wasn't fear or anxiety. It was just uh, no sleeping. Okay, I'll sit up and meditate. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all right yeah okay yeah. that was my that was my way of dealing with it yeah <laughs> i insisted on sleeping and then i had the craziest dreams and it was all about locations mm. and it was like energy lines and locations and then i was looking up one of them trying to figure out where it was and i, I kept thinking it was in spain because it's a spanish name so i was looking for it in the map in spain right and i couldn't find it uh, but then when we talked about this morning where you live, yeah, <laughs> I suddenly thought, oh my God, it's Albert, Albuquerque, somewhere? Albuquerque, Albuquerque. Yeah. yeah. And it was like in the dream that the person kept saying, okay, you mustn't forget this. This is what it's like the name of this place. You mustn't forget. And I said, okay, spell it out for me. And I had <laughs> to spell it out. Um, so I wouldn't forget it. Right. Yeah. And I get when I was spelling it down, I thought, that sounds really Spanish. I bet it's in Spain. <laughs> yeah. Well, this get, was, this, yeah. this part of the world was Spanish territory. At one point. Yeah. Spanish, yes. New yeah. Mexico. Yeah. Really. <laughs> the topic that I'm fascinated about right now, and we talked about it a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. was the um, whole um, area where you're at is extremely sacred and that's something you told me too like the los alamos yeah extremely sacred to the native american people right right and the whole area yeah and we talked a little bit about the dulce um underground base right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the influences there and uh, what i knew about the dulce uh, base historically was a sacred space for the native americans but also a contact point somewhere where they would go to have direct contact with extraterrestrials or ultra ultra terrestrials maybe we could say mm. individuals um races or one particular race that was prominent is prominent there mm. um, they have areas in california too and um you've been feeling their energy huh <laughs> yeah 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 it's um the, yeah, the whole the whole region, you know, I'm in Santa Fe, so Albuquerque, which is spelled so weirdly. So you no. have to spell A B L B U Q U. Yeah, Quirky. I know. It's really hard to spell. Now I know this because I had to spell it like ten times last night. <laughs> oh my gosh. But uh, yeah, the whole area, Albuquerque is in one direction and then here I'm in Santa Fe and then Dolce is over towards the border with Colorado and this whole area um, has a very it's like very it's interesting it's very grounded 
but also, I mean, because there's a lot of earth energy and there's a lot of shamanic traditions being practiced here, mm -hmm. but there's also this very cosmic kind of connection. So yeah. it's like there are portals all over. Um, and this was, of course, the old, the way, way past Native American tradition knew that. And that's mm -hmm. why this was sacred land, because they could connect with sacred wisdom through the ultra dimensionals or, you know, whatever, <laughs> those beings. And those beings had access to this story of creation that is universal and all the, all the beings and all the dimensions that, you know, are more evolved than we are here on planet earth at the moment. You know, they all go through that learning process of understanding how creation, oneness, source works. So, of course, that wisdom came through to the Native Americans here. It's a uh, very profound, but also it's been feeling a bit disturbed lately, is what mm. I would say. Yeah, we talked a little bit about um, looking at that disturbed energy, didn't we? Because yeah. I think we both came to the conclusion that even though, well, it, it, it's, it annoys me, actually. It really annoys me. Mm. Um, but at the same time, it's important to address it because, as you pointed out, we need to look at it from a larger perspective, a more positive perspective, and also let people know that even though that stuff's happening right now, uh, which basically is the attempting of hijacking or the attempt to stop what's happening right now mm. at, a, at a larger scale, um, it, letting them know on how to counteract those attempts, right? Yeah. yeah. And that they can't really get hold unless we let them by through fear or frustration or anger and stuff like that. Right, right, right. We have to give permission yeah. in some way that we're not actually necessarily aware. Exactly. <laughs> but we are by buying yeah. into, like that piece yeah. about buying into the status quo equals security. Therefore, right. we're all going to keep working at trying to keep this illusion of status quo. Because of course, status quo is an illusion because we're in a dynamic universe. Right. Status quo, dynamic universe, those two things don't really go together <laughs> very well. But also what, but we, what you brought up, which is really, I feel the crux of this, is it felt like maybe some of this sense of disturbance here was because of this other phenomenal thing that's happening mm, just, yeah. you know, one state away <laughs> that uh, with the, this is, this is really huge, the Standing Rock Sioux tribe, but the whole, the, the coming together of all the tribes. Yes. That is so big. And I really feel that it's, yeah, I think people get a sense of it. Mm. I mean, you look at people all around the world are in, are very inspired and interested in wanting to help and wanting to support it. But yeah, like I think giving words to what it really means is very powerful at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it's totally related to it. And it's not coincidence that where you're at is so, uh, they're, they're trying to divide and conquer again through the sacred spaces. Right. sacred portal sacred areas it's no coincidence that the government took over all those sacred areas right it's powerful uh, what i've seen here because i live in a native american reservation it's a radical <clears throat> change um, that is so deep it's just unbelievable when i first got here i had a very strong sense and um also there's a a belief that went around saying, uh, this is how it's always been, so this is how it's always going to be. Right. Um, and it was to do with the corruption of the government, um, the way in which nobody wanted to com commit a political suicide by doing the right thing. And also a very strong sense of division among the, tri the tribes here. Mm. So there was no way in the world they were going to work together uh, from with the tribe to the left and the tribe to the right or north or south or east and can't go any further west here, it's <laughs> in the ocean. Um, but it was very much a very divided energy among the tribes. Larry and I are from different tribes, you know, he's from the Maca and I'm half Mapuche from South 
South America. Right. Uh, when we got together, of course, we started visualizing and seeing the unification of all the tribes of America, like Central, North and South America, not just in North America. And um, we, I remembered very strongly the, the uh, mythology behind the prophecy of the eagle and the condor uniting. Right. I felt, I felt um, very romantic about it, of course. You know, we're in a romantic relationship. So. But it was really awesome. And we had one of the girls in Walk With Me Now did a flag for us. And, and I, uh, a symbol, which is the condor and the eagle flying together, right? Mm -hmm. And it's really beautiful. And we've been flying the flag on our boat, you know, uh, for months and months and months, quite actually a year since she sent us the flag. We've been flying it and symbols and flags reflect and also are very powerful mystical objects, especially when they're infused with love and acceptance and everything. And that was reflective, I think, of what was happening in the background, because what I had been seeing, and especially since that event that's happening, what state is that at? Um, uh, North Dakota. Yeah, North Dakota. <laughs> especially since that. And I've, seen, yeah. <laughs> I've seen the tribes coming together. There was one tribe who brought them buffalo and said, um, we're sorry for killing your people. And, you know, and uh, here's our offering of peace. And um, I thought, wow, when I heard that, wow, it's like amazing, you know? And it's <laughs> like, oh, I know, it makes me cry too. <laughs> It's, yeah. It was um, the amazingness of it. It's world changing, and um, it was reflected here too because um, people from here, you know, the tribe here, the Maka tribe, um, sent their their people up there with um, funds and um, objects, sacred objects and things to support them. But also, what's been happening here, and this is a conversation I had with Larry, was. Um, the tribes here are not now talking about uniting in their fishing efforts, which fishing here is the main staple income and support of the tribe. And the tribes along the coast here had always been divided. And even when I first arrived here, I said, well, they were, they were, they had gone to white man's court to figure out who had rights to fish where, right? And then they stop each other from fishing in different locations. And I, I asked Larry, I said, but why are they doing this? Why don't they just unite and everybody can fish around and it benefits everybody because they have different tribes fish for different things. So they have different access, to different uh, technologies. And then the, the market united, they have a massive market. They have, they can tap the world and not just tiny little companies because the, the quantities and the organization would be much greater and they would bring so much benefit to all the tribes and the elders and the people who need help and it will just enrich the entire coast you know all the tribes and he said yeah that's all very well but every time that I bring it up because he's been bringing it up for years so people just say no and no 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 I'm not I'm not going to do anything to help those people but now it has spontaneously happened Mm -hmm. right? The tribe spontaneously started coming together and talking and discussing these things, how to unite. And I think probably fishing is the first thing and there'll be more, you know? Yeah, yeah. This represents such unity and also because of what the Native American peoples represent for the world at a mystical level, are the caretakers of Gaia, right? Right. right. And also united they haven't been united since way before the white man came, right? When the shift happened, it happened here too. And there was a divide and conquer here too. And the patriarch took over here way before the white man came. And so this change of energy to being united is like an embodiment of what the energies that they have been representing, even though they haven't manifested at a physical level, they are now manifesting at a collective level and physical too and it's like you said you know, it's like it's really inspiring the entire world to support this it's like a way shower 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, it makes me tear up too, just to, just to really look at how big this is. I mean, for all of these tribes to come together in support of the waters, right? <laughs> which, the waters and the trees. <laughs> which are, you know, this is like universal all over the yeah. planet, but, they, but they've come together. It's, it's exactly what we as humanity have to do. Yeah. I mean, they're, yeah, they're the way showers. They're, 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 they're energetically creating a pathway mm-hmm. that, uh, and it's not going to be governments doing it. Yeah, it's it's people. people. It's just, it has to come down to people. It's just like this, this shift on the planet that I can't help but feel is happening, is going to happen. Yes. <laughs> it is I happening. Just yes. can't get, yeah, it's happening. And, um, but this shift is taking place by everybody waking up, moving into their own sovereignty, uh, taking responsibility for, well, uh, responsibility is kind of a loaded word. Let's say. The ability to respond is much better, right? <laughs> yeah. Responding to what's happening from yeah. their higher. From a conscious perspective. More conscious, awakened self. Yeah. yeah. So it's very, it's like really, that's why this thing is so powerful because it's, yeah. it's really the first, I think, really big global movement. I mean, there was, there was a, in South Africa, when they had um, the revolution that ended up being, you know, the Rainbow Nation, when Mandela mm. became elected, that was that was a very big step in this direction. But this yes. is like the next feels to me like the next step. So mm. it's great. Yeah, it's it's odd because some. I mean, this has been happening around the world. I know that there's tribes, the Mapuche tribes in South uh, America. Mm. in Chile and Argentina they're nowadays being persecuted imprisoned and murdered because they're defending uh, land forests uh, they're refusing to sell out to electrical companies to build dams and or cattle it, companies <laughs> yeah and it's like they're being killed today not something that happened in the 60s not something that happened in the 50s today right? 2016, yeah. this is happening. And it doesn't reach the news, right? It wasn't able to reach the news. And even though the, there have been um, people who have supported it, and there's a lot of organizations in Chile and Argentina, and even some here in the States who support and try, are trying to bring it to the forefront, it just didn't reach it. But this item, this one, in North, was it North Dakota, did you say? Dakota. Um, this one did. It's like a building. For some reason, this one did. And for some reason, this one was like the, the straw that broke the camel's back, you know? Yeah, the tipping the, point. The tipping point, too. Yeah. And for some reason, this is it. And when you talked about the status quo and people thinking that the status quo has to collapse for the new to come in. I don't, I think that that's part of the illusion of fear. Right, right. Because it's like, okay, this is the status quo. This is where you're safe, like you said, it's, a, it's an illusion of safety. And if you get rid of it, you're gonna be starving, chaotic, you won't be able to shop, you won't be able to feed yourself a warmth or anything. There'll be chaos, people will be, you know, coming to you with guns and taking all your stuff killing you, things like that. And you look at it and you think, okay, um, actually, it's not, going, it's, not, it's not going that way, right? Human beings at their core are supportive of each other. They are willing to, so, to unite and protect themselves and uh, the others and the planet. They have that capacity. Also, the shift is slow and it's by the person embodying a new paradigm in their physical body, in their life. Right. right. Not through a social <laughs> happening. I mean, we've seen that, right? We waited for 2012. We waited for all the other special dates that people have come up with where the shift was going to happen and things were going to collapse. We've been waiting for an economical collapse since the 1800s and the right. minor ones that affect certain parts of the world here and there. But nothing that's global. 
Um, and, um, and I think part of that illusion of collapse is, has to do with strengthening what's there already because people become afraid of the collapse so they strengthen what's there already. Right. Ethically, mystically and also physically. Yeah, they put all their energy into maintaining this illusion yeah. of the status quo. Right, right. Yeah. So that's how is it linked to what's been happening with the Native Americans? I think that that's the subtlety of it, isn't it? That's mm. the Yeah, yeah. And well we were what we were seeing, I think, was that some of this some of this uh, unrest that I've been picking up lately here in New Mexico is backlash because of the success of this coming together. Yes. And, <laughs> and it's gonna, you know, so people feel that and they think, oh, something's wrong, you know, what's the problem, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's just, it's, it's that, um, you know, it's, it's just the powers that were pushing handling sabers <laughs> like yeah. no 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 not yet yeah Sorry, buddies, your time has come <laughs> yeah but not yet that is really funny we had a friend over hmm. and um we were talking again about the financial collapse thing another friend has invested heavily on, in silver right. and his investment to come through there has to be a financial collapse <laughs> Right, so <laughs> and, uh, it's like it's funny because it doesn't make any sense to me, but this is how it goes. This is how the theory goes. Uh, so this other friend said, um, "Oh, I just sold my house, so okay, we'll have this financial collapse. Great, I want it, but not yet because I've got all my money in the bank." <laughs> and it's like that not yet energy, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, not yet. Yeah. Let's and, well, and also just the, I mean. The fact that everybody's afraid of this financial exactly. collapse, or strengthens, or yeah. you know, planetary, um, global, all the resources being destroyed by storms, or um, you know, burning up, or volcanic eruptions, or whatever, um, people are actually being used to create that with their imaginations with yes. their fears holding it in consciousness right yes so it's uh it doesn't have to be at all like what is being predicted and a lot mm -hmm. of really well-meaning people are participating in this i know <laughs> yes. i mean i you know it's yeah. it's it's tricky it's very mm -hmm. tricky but that's, anyway, there's something really good happening <laughs> with is, the Native yeah. Americans, and that's what I feel like deserves the focus at the moment. And, yeah. Um, supporting yeah. that unity and then for the rest of us to be able to follow suit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, when individuals feel that disturbance in the matrix type thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, like last night, right? Yeah. I mean, I woke up feeling awful because I hardly slept and um, I, so I had a headache. I was feeling nauseous with the energies and everything. It's very easy to fall into, um, oh, they're winning or, oh, they're taking over or um, they're destroying things or whatever. It's very easy to fall into that. And when we fall into it, and become annoyed and become angry and become all the others we are telling them yes you succeeded right and we're actually giving it permission to exactly it, right yes <laughs> so when we look at it and we we feel those disturbances and we wake up feeling icky yucky what we can do is to look at it and think okay um they've reacted and um it affected me physically it affected me maybe emotionally um because I was half asleep anyways. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, now that I'm awake, um, I can look and see the real reason behind it. Right. And I will not be affected by this negativity. What if that negativity didn't exist? Right. And just going to that energy, what if that didn't exist? What would it be really like for us, for the species, for the planet? What would it be really like? I was driving back from 
uh, where was where were we? Um, I can't remember now. It was a long drive. I've been mm -hmm. traveling a lot. And, was it from uh, California? Back up to Washington, maybe? No, it was. Uh, oh, when we came back from Europe. Okay. Uh, coming back from Oregon. That's it. It was from the north. See, you see so yeah. well. You can see me driving up from <laughs> to Oregon, probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But no, we actually landed in Oregon Airport because we had our puppy um, with her, his breeder there. So we had to go and collect him first. Oh. We went down to Oregon to collect him and then we were driving up from it. And I was looking at the cities. We went through Portland. We went through, um, well, we landed in Seattle. And then we went down through Portland and towards where she is. And then uh, we were driving back and miles and miles of roads, miles and miles of forests, the roads and the cars and technology. It's, to me, it's amazing. I mean, the capacity we have as a species to dream up these things. Yeah. And then to allocate materials and then to construct them all while having all sorts of different stories and histories and stuff happening with each individual who is involved in that. It just amazes me. It just really, really amazes me to what we can create, what, what we're like with the creator energy that we have, that we embody. And that's, even though it's, it's firewalled, it's blocked, and it's all these things. <laughs> and a lot of individuals react against technology, for example. They think technology is evil. Um, and that roads and things like that are evil. Um, but when you look at it, it's like we've created them. And we can also create alternatives. We can daydream alternatives. Uh, but we don't necessarily need to have to get rid of our capacity to create technology or make right. our lives easier. Yeah? Because it's, like, it's almost like a push or a drive to living very comfortably in this physical world. And that's fascinating in itself because no other animal does that. No other animal. I mean, animals... They create dams, you know, the other animals make nests, other animals um, uh, alter the shape of rivers and forests and stuff like that. However, they do it for survival and they do it, they have been doing the same thing for millions of years. We, however, have been altering how, what we surround ourselves with and how we live hmm. for a very short time and very radically. And I'm talking about simple things like toilets, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. faucets with water in them, um, cookers or uh, stoves, you know, to cook our dinners in. I'm talking about communication systems that brings food from around the world to our supermarket. And I'm talking about that type of thing that, okay, uh, we can talk about the financial structure being all messed up and all that. It's true. It is true. We're being controlled through debt and all the others. But our drive is almost like a drive in the way in which we are developing as a species and also moving forward. I was reading the other day that throughout time or the recorded time that the human being has been on the planet, their lifestyles or the for example house a house mm, a shelter mm, mm. the shelter the human being lived in say 2000 years ago was very geographically um limited, limited. yeah it was limited by being the close geography. to water or close to yeah and the materials used to create the shelter and the shape of the shelter was very localized Right. right. They all, if you took a shelter from um, the jungles in Brazil, for example, and then you took a shelter from the Nevada desert, or you took a shelter from um, the Egyptian jet desert, you took a sh another one from Africa, another one from Russia, they would all be extremely different 2,000 years ago. They were like radically, radically different. Now you take 
a shelter from Brazil and you take a shelter from Africa, you take a shelter from Nevada, you take a shelter from Russia or any other country and you put them side by side and they're nearly identical. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Thinking about, well, I, I mean, I do spend time in Egypt, I, in both North Africa and Egypt and in South Africa. And there are, there, there are a range. There are things that are still very much Local. like 2,000 years ago, very mm -hmm. localized. But also, uh, and many of those have implemented, uh, you know, sort of begun to include things from this more worldwide. Yeah. Perspective. So, yeah, that's yeah, that's true. That's yeah, true. it's like it's difficult now to find a country where there isn't a suburb. <laughs> that's true. Right. Yeah, even even out in the bush in uh, yeah. South Africa, I live in a suburb of a little tiny town. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So that that is part of it. It's part of it. It's like. Hmm. But it's that creativity. It's it that, is. and that's that's our divinity. It is, that's isn't it? Source, divine, created universes and galaxies and all of that, and so that's kind of our divine capacity for creativity coming through. It's amazing what can be done, and so of course, look what we've already done. What can we do? We can do much more. I mean, I know there, there are ways that we can address all of the things that we've been doing to poor, dear, beloved Gaia. But of course, you know, she can shake us off like fleas. I know, she doesn't care. To. <laughs> she hasn't, right? But we can definitely make amends. I know there are ways that we can um, address things. Uh, yeah, we have the capacity to restore environments. Mm. To have that capacity is real. Um, Absolutely. And it's like, when I look at that, you know, I, ha I am surrounded here by forests, but these forests are pretty new because they were planted by people. The original forests were cut down for uh, materials and then replanted with uh, trees that grow very quickly and every, I don't know, but every 40 years or maybe 20 years, I don't know, yeah. they get harvested. It's like a tree farm. Right tree farms everywhere. Some of them have been converted into forests again, and they're being managed to create um, a natural native forest. And we're talking about hundreds of acres, right? But most of it is still um, forest farms. And it's like the environment, because it's a forest farm, has been whatever trees that got chosen have been extremely successful in their survival. <laughs> Because they're looked after by humans, they're, um, you know, all sprayed and all the other things that a farm does. Yeah. But at the same time, the trees themselves have been extremely successful by convincing us that they're very useful. That we can mm. create houses and paper and all sorts of things out of them. So, like environments, you know, I've traveled a lot. I've traveled extensively through the Americas. I'm talking about South America, Central America, North America. I've traveled to Europe extensively too. And all I can say is that the illusion that we're overpopulated, the illusion that there's so much cities and that there's not enough nature, it's so false. You have no idea. There the locations that are highly populated are tiny, tiny, minuscule compared to the areas of the planet that haven't been touched. Right. Really, really are. And for some reason, people like to congregate, but they like to live in tiny little clusters of high density, in high density areas. And as a species, we have created the technology to do that safely and in health because when they first cities first started uh at least in Black the plague i know right those was, yeah. they weren't well managed no. mind, you, mind you mind you oh yes uh, yeah yeah i was thinking about rome but actually rome had plagues as well that killed a lot of their people several times so it, because they kind of started with the hygiene and the sewage systems and all that stuff 
a long, long time ago. Um, but yeah, they had those problems too. So we tend to gather, you know, in tin, tiny little clusters. We tend to create the same now worldwide technologies of suburbs and the houses look nearly identical with little local variation, but they have a bedroom at least, they have a kitchen, they have a bathroom, they have a lounge, a garden, you know, <laughs> or yeah. a balcony, depending on where you are, and different sizes and shapes, but it's still the same kind of basic model. And um, so anyways, yeah, the, the, with regards to the planet, Gaia and saving the planet is like, give me a break, you know. The planet doesn't need saving. The planet will continue whether we're here on it or not. It's right. Like, it's what we're weather. talking about <laughs> is our survival. Yes. <laughs> whether we get to continue here or not. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Which I feel very, I feel is definitely going to happen. Oh, absolutely. And you can't <laughs> stop the tide no matter. How many yeah. kids you tie in a crown <laughs> in a yeah. chair trying to stop it? Yeah. No, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I really feel that this, uh, what's happening now with people coming together mm -hmm. is the only way it's going to happen. Well, it's I mean, not going to happen. It is happening. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, it is fully, happening. Fully manifest. Fully manifest. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's in process. Yeah. In process. Yeah. And it does involve both ourselves embodying the new paradigm, but also, and I see that as being really important, mm. connection, reconnection with others. Right. They work right. in groups, they're working together, they're getting together. Um, I had an event recently in, in Girona, Spain. There were like 300 people there, um, plus several hundred online. And they were awake, and individuals who are awake, who are working in their empowerment, who are working on embodying the new paradigm. The energy, I can't even describe it. I mean, you can probably sense it, right? Well, I, I did. I saw the, the video you sent. Oh, that's me. right. Yes. That's right. It is oh great. It is great. It's great. It's great. It blew my mind. Just yeah. the collective intent, the joint collective intent, of embodying the new paradigm, of healing the entire human species, because that was one of the exercises we did. Mm -hmm. And the conscious aware, awareness of consciously manifesting moment to moment. Yeah. Just simple intents joined by just 300 people live and just a few hundred online and a few more hundred coming in as the people watch their recording. The power, I, when I first looked at that, like way, like a nearly a year before, I thought we we're going to have like 7,000 people there because I thought that's the only way this, this is going to be this powerful, right? But it's because people are so powerful. They are, they are embodying the new paradigm. And if just 300 people can do that, or let's say 500 people with the ones that are online, it just, let's say a thousand because people have been buying the recording. <laughs> yeah. But let's just say even if just a thousand people out of, well, how many are we now? Six billion people on the planet? And if just a thousand out of that can make these changes and can make a field of environment that powerful. Can you imagine just, even can you imagine the possibilities you know if all six billion went that way right well and, and you know even if it's i mean i think that that is going to happen with the entire species making an evolutionary leap but even a small percentage that's that <laughs> tipping point idea and there are a lot of people I mean, it feels really, yeah, it feels very yeah. exciting to me right now. And, you know, what you mentioned is what, one of the things that I'm, is what I'm so big about at this point, because, you know, my history as a ballet dancer and yes. been all these years of uh, spiritual work, 45 plus, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, that uh, I really, uh, my thing at the moment that I really feel the, is so 
important is this experience of really feeling the body as conscious you know, yes. conscious embodiment yes. and as a uh, so it's a it's a real vehicle so that the being who knows that they're a soul not just a being who has a soul but a soul who's embodied in this body can really emanate that energy and make a difference yes so that's why that's the thing i'm like really <laughs> working on that, that's my thing at the moment <laughs> that is super exciting i was so happy when you went that way because i mean apart from you being the most gifted um guided meditation person and even silent meditation person oh. that i know <laughs> it's like anybody wants oh. to learn about meditation and empowerment <laughs> exercises go to victoria because she's it and oh. she's that Emanation of presence.org. Yeah. <laughs> so I was really, really excited when you went that way because I also feel that our physical bodies are the key here. Yeah. Um, I see them as a different entity. I see them as physical elementals. As I, that's how I call them. Uh, they're different from the soul and they're in a symbiotic, uh, supportive relationship between the soul and the human body. Exactly. It's like a marriage. Yes, like a marriage. Yeah. And the physical human body has the capacity to host a soul from multiple different dimensions. It's like there's souls here in physical bodies from different planets, who evolved in different planets, who evolved in different dimensions, who are of by frequency or dimension, uh, uh, vibrationally, radically different realities and they can come in and embody one of these physical bodies a human body and that makes them human that's what a human is it's a soul an eternal divine being that it doesn't matter where they evolved incarnated into a human body and the human body is also rich with dna and information and data from multiple planets and dimensions it's an amazing, amazing tool, an amazing, amazing being. And also it's the one that generates, like when you say emanate, this vibration and frequency. It, it, it is the tool that we use to create physical reality as far as I can see. Yeah. We, yeah. we imagine it, we see it, something, and then we feel it. We feel it as real. That energy of feeling is almost like that's we feel with our physical bodies we feel it in our body and that's the energy that goes out and then it gets manifested in our environment right 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 yeah there's a there's like a, I w I've been really looking at this recently because of because I'm you know doing this series and um, for a long time I've been looking at conscious awareness mm -hmm. uh, and, and how to come into conscious awareness using the body, mind, breath, and all that. But, and there's kind of this sense that the seed of conscious awareness is kind of right up around here or something. Mm -hmm. But really, in, at this point now, I'm really seeing it that the seed of awareness is like in the belly brain. Mm. There's this belly brain, heart, mind, open to the cosmos, open, you know, roots down into Gaia that is the, it's the realm of the body. Yes. And it gives the spirit this incredible experience, this capacity to grow in wisdom and meet the challenges and learn how to be an expression of the fabric of this universe, which... Mm love right <laughs> oh, love light You're right yeah. love and light yeah so i don't know yeah uh, yeah so i find it very exciting that you've yeah. decided to go on that yeah um, you have you have an offering right now mm. um and you're also you told me you were going to egypt i was really interested in that too yeah yeah 
Uh, I'm going to do it with a friend of mine who's been leading sacred journeys to Egypt for like 25 years. She's amazing and she has amazing connections and, you know, she knows how to organize something where you have private time in the Great Pyramid at Giza, private nice. time because <laughs> of the Sphinx, private time. I mean, you pay for it, but you do have to know how to set these things up. Right. And so, yeah, so we're going to offer a, a trip, a sacred journey, uh, or a, I, let's see, how, I can't remember how I put it, but a journey to sacred Egypt, because mm. Egypt is another one of those places. It is. Like this, like this territory here mm -hmm. that we were talking about before, where there was a lot of, a long, long, long time ago, way before many thousands of years ago, um, that whole Egyptian civilization's from the past that we don't even know about. And those right. are the ones where there was, again, there was this interstellar mm -hmm. uh, communication and they, they actually were gifted with the wisdom of the universe. And um, it of course got mightily knocked about <laughs> <laughs> over the, over the eons and, you know, so. Well, that was our choice as a species we decided to have a different experience. Playtime. <laughs> yeah. Playtime and duality. <laughs> right. So yeah, how many yeah. people um, can go in this? Oh, it's, it's actually pretty intimate um, because we spend much of the time on a boat. Yeah. Did you know that? <laughs> yes, they told me that. Like, <gasps> on the that very yeah, this beautiful boat called the Afendina that is a replica of a sailing vessel from a couple of thousand years ago. Mm. And so we spend most of the time on the Nile and, and sailing to, you know, or even like when we're in Luxor, we're, we're sleeping on the boat, but on the Nile, but we then go to the various sites. There's a lot of stuff there. Um, temples and funeral burial areas and mm. all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, so because we're on the small boat that we can only have, I think, 16 people. So it's an 16. intimate journey, yeah. but yeah, it's going to be really amazing. And that's um, on your site right now. Did you put it on your site already? Yeah, it is on my site. It is on that my is site. Cool. Yeah, it's interesting. Three. It's interesting that you're doing events like very intimate for a small amount of people that are going to a very in-depth journey, mm -hmm. because that's the way I'm going to I'm moving away from the public stuff the large events and all that large volume mm. of very basic information going out and i'm going more into the really small intimate uh private classes and courses and we create Which is them. much more interesting for you right for me exactly yeah you can really get into the yeah. nitty-gritty of the stuff you know the 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 proper in-depth things and the individuals who come also can really really get into the stuff that they are interested in right they're very high vibrational to begin with exactly. and therefore you can go into really interesting i know i that wasn't an intention of mine but that's kind of how it's worked out for me and i'm fine with it because i really am amazed at the people that i'm meeting i know it's really cool. <laughs> uh the article that daniela sent you yeah. <laughs> this. Yes. Yeah. So basically, she sent me um, an article that showed in in it was there was two articles. There's one from the Independent newspaper in the UK, mm. and there was another one from I can't remember, but it was a massive newspaper too, talking about how to at least two billionaires are paying for technology that will take us out of the matrix this false matrix that we're living in right so basically they these very influential billionaires and companies have already stated that yes we live in a false matrix and now they're investing huge amounts of money to invent the technology to move us out of it to get us wow. out of the false matrix that is amazing. I know, right? It's like, that is right. I mean, that's radically, it's a little bit like the Native Americans joining together throughout their Yeah, lives. yeah. Because it's so radically different and so also um, 
a physical manifestation of what we've been talking about for years now. It's like how of the, what the shift really looks like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think when you told me about that, I was like, yeah, I guess maybe I'm, I'm, I feel like some of us are working from the other end, which is to, uh, to get everybody to see that uh, the status quo, the illusion of the status quo, which everybody's holding together with consciousness, is a false matrix. Right. <laughs> So we can work it from both ends, exactly. <laughs> and also from the level of consciousness of individuals to uh, recognize that this is an amazing dynamic universe, absolutely constantly in motion, yeah. which means change in ways that, like we were talking about, how in just a couple of thousand years humans have evolved so much stuff, and it's. Mm -hmm you know so it's been an interesting growth learning experience and some of it hasn't been great like everything to do with oil but you know <laughs> we're learning we're learning well <laughs> putting a little clause there everything okay. doing with oil is al uh, allowing us to have this conversation because most of it, my computer mm -hmm. is created from products from that oil That's, well and also <laughs> Also, those uh, minerals in Africa, right? Yes, the minerals yeah. in Africa, yeah. yeah. But, okay, so up until now, those are the things we've used. But there are other ways. Like, we do know there is free energy, yes. right? Yes, absolutely, there's free energy. Mm -hmm. the, also, the illusion of lack or mm -hmm. limitations of resources, that's an illusion because we're not limited. That's right, that's right. Um, and... One of the things that I found interesting was um, the, ma the whole matrix thing. Mm. I was writing a chapter on um, my latest novel, The Interview with an Angel. Yes. And the conversation went into what are we doing here and what is the real reason why we're evolving? I mean, the whole illusion of evolution right? It's ridiculous. Every time I look at a person, it doesn't matter if they're awake or asleep. I see an eternal, eternal divine, all-knowing being, uh, omnipotent being. I see this. I know this. Every time I look at any person, even if it's a drug addict in the street, or it's an enlightened person in a mystical school or in an event, I see it. And I look at them and think, how come they think that in an evolutionary process <laughs> and how come we as a species are evolving you know um and it felt to me like we're carrying something somewhere it's like a journey of us carrying something rather than evolution and then i started looking at the anunnaki energy of expansion and genetic evolution for them it's a very material aspect of evolution and I was looking at the energy of the Dracos, and they are also obsessed with physical evolution, like the genetics, and also the intellectual, the mind, um, and the mind powers evolution. And various other beings uh, that I've looked at or had experience with or contact with, they're all involved in some sort of illusion of evolution. But even when I look at all of them, I see the divine, eternal, essence consciousness awareness at a universal level so to me what happened was like okay it's, it's this one is about the matrix and we are the the fuel you know <laughs> and the brick and mortar of a created matrix mm -hmm. and the matrix is itself how come i mean how come we are so keen to keep it how come we are so involved in incarnating into it even individuals who will spend a lifetime of being asleep they will wake they will die and, and some of them will continue with the illusion during the in-between lives and come back thinking that they're evolving and they're learning and they're doing this and that and whatever but i think a great majority go into the in-between lives and they realize what it is Right? They know it's a matrix, they know it's a game, they know this and they know a lot more, 
and they still choose to come back. Yeah. <laughs> why? You know, why? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, my, my take on that is that there is, there is a reason to come back and read it. It's, it's, a, it's a way to play in multiplicity. And, and also, I do feel like, I don't know, maybe we and I have a different take on this, but that a soul does go through a, tra a trajectory of, of coming into different levels of, of wisdom of what's already there, mm -hmm. right? Which I guess you could. I don't know if that's what you're thinking of when you're calling it evolution or not. But I, one of the funniest things I remember reading once is that somebody who'd, who'd come here and had like a long life, like they lived to be 85 or something. And then when they got back to the other side, they said, uh, they said, God, it felt just like I went to the corner store for a carton of milk. <laughs> <laughs> the whole lifetime here 85 years yeah. seems like a very big long life but to a soul it was just like going to the corner grocery yeah. store for a carton of milk i'm so happy you brought that up because <laughs> the other thing that's been on my mind quite a lot recently is the illusion that we have to have tiny 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 little short lives yeah yeah we have embedded in our physicality or have been embedded in our physicality to say that we have to age and we have to die within a hundred years. It's like, right. we've only just gotten started. Yeah. I mean, we've only just gotten started knowing how this works, how this world or matrix creation works. We're just getting started knowing what we want in life. We're just getting started knowing the richness and of the stuff that we can do. Yeah. Even if we are like, talented in some way like musically or creativity or, or healing or, or numbers or whatever we're just getting started when we're reaching the age and then our body starts degrading and dies and then we have to start all over in a new body and not necessarily with the same um, interest but often they are so to me it's like it's a uh, very uh, because I've seen timelines where we don't do that as a human species mm. and the richness of the experience and the richness of the level of knowledge or wisdom or awareness that we can reach in one lifetime is much grander, much amazing. I mean, just blow your mind, I think. Right, right. right. So this timeline is very specific, very particular about this, having tiny, tiny little short life, uh, lifespans. And so I've been looking at that and looking at ways of counteracting it. Mm, mm -hmm. And when I look at it, how to counteract it, I feel that when a really nice little exercise we can do is to visualize or imagine that our lifespan is 5,000 years. And then all sorts of things will happen. You'll get triggered, like your physical body will probably get triggered. And, and you'll have all sorts of problems come up and then write those down, right? So it's right. Like, Oh crap, you know, how are we going to keep it young? Oh crap, you know, I'm already getting old. How am I going to reverse it? Right. Uh, oh man, all my relatives and friends and my lover is going to be dead. Um, I'm going to be all alone. Um, what others? Oh, how am I going to stop uh, the government from grabbing me and cutting me up in a, in a, in a laboratory? Um, <laughs> <It's very true. laughs> and all these programs is how am I going to survive? You know, um, how am I going to make money from for five thousand years to survive? <laughs> Nobody's um, going to want to hire me if I'm over <laughs> five thousand years. <laughs> oh, God, you can't even get tired if you're over forty now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, um, do I want to be um, a male or a female for 5,000 years? Do I want to be black or white or yellow or red for 5,000 years? Do I want to have blue eyes for 5,000 years? Do I want to have blonde hair for 5,000 years? So, but I was planning on becoming a black man from North Africa next year, next <laughs> time, or maybe I was going to be a billionaire female from New York, Jewish actually, next <laughs> lifetime. So, and then it's like the illusion of having to have different lifetimes to have different experiences is also an illusion. Fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Then, how flexible can we become? Because we know now it's scientifically proven 
that our DNA is not static, that we can actually change our DNA with our emotions and we can change our DNA with our thoughts and with our environment. Yeah, so, and our intentions. Yes. So it's like how it, it is that flexible. So do we, if we really, 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 really wanted to be, say, a male shaman from um, Mexico next lifetime, why you know is it really really necessary to be reborn or can we simply through morph. yeah morph into that right <laughs> and then it's like oh yeah but you were actually actually born um a woman in i don't know california right so you were actually born. so if you become a man a shaman shamanic teacher from mexico overnight uh, you're not genuine Mm. you have to be born into the tribe you have to be born into that lineage and then you have to be adopted by the shaman there because i was yes. to work so it's all of those programs we have a lot of rules don't we we have a lot of rules <laughs> we have a lot of programs and it's yeah. all about the physical bodies mm. the physical mm. bodies and all the rules that are around it so five thousand years and it's like i've seen it and i've seen people who were like over 100 years old and looked 20. I've seen that mm. in South America. It's mm -hmm. not that uncommon there. Um, and in Africa, it's the same way. Um, I mean, not quite so many years as you're mentioning, but somebody who you can't tell if somebody's in their 40s or their 70s. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's just the, and the black Africans are like that. Yeah. It's amazing. The African people. Right. Real African people. Yeah. Africa. Yeah, it is amazing. It's fascinating, isn't it? The, I mean, the knowledge is still there to a certain degree, uh, but there's other ways to bump them off. <laughs> That's really the next level of where we're going with cellular illumination and this body piece. The yeah. body piece, yeah. That's why I'm so excited about what you're doing. When you, <laughs> I can't express how excited I was when you oh. first mentioned it. Oh. And I know I haven't expressed it to you necessarily because I keep thinking that you receive all I think about anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and then I forget, oh wait, oh, really? wait, 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 people in right now. So we, yeah. I, we have to express it, <laughs> otherwise you won't get it. <laughs> right, right. So yeah. um, mm. I think it's, yeah, that's been in my awareness very, very powerfully, very strongly looking at that. Um, you may or may not know, but I was scheduled. One of my scheduled leavings was June this year. Right. It was really, really tough. Really tough to get out of that program. It was so, so deep. And I remember you saying 2017, 2017. Yeah, and there's another one coming up for March, April. <laughs> another one of those windows, because we have windows and we can choose them. But the very, yeah. very, very powerful, strong ones was June this year, this year. And the other one is April, March of next year. Mm. And looking at this, I know I can see them and I know how they go. But looking at them um, and stepping away from that program is really, really tough. Mm. And then stepping away from the program that my body um, has to age, for example. And that's brand new because in 2010, before I became public, um, I hadn't aged since I was 20. I know that. I remember yeah. that well. Yeah. So I hadn't aged at all. And then I thought, oh my gosh, you know, there's all these people going to be looking at me. They're going to say, hold on a minute. Isn't she like in her 40s or 50s or something? And she looks like 20. There's something Maybe weird we better her. go cut her up. Yeah. <laughs> now what's inside of her? All right. I hadn't thought about that bit. But... Does she have two hearts? <laughs> <laughs> like Doctor Who? <laughs> right. I have thought about, I have thought about, um, mm both that nobody will take me seriously because I'm too young looking. And also the, the oh, she's totally different, right? So she doesn't even age. So how can she be teaching anything to us? Because she doesn't know where we're coming from. Right. That's right. Right. She's not subject to the same laws. That exactly. We Therefore, Therefore to yeah. her. <laughs> so anyway, I activated the aging program. And a month later, I regrettedly, regretted <laughs> it, right? It's like, what wow. is that? So, you know. How do I turn it off? Oh my gosh, the white hair. <laughs> no, oh my God, what are these things? Oh, Wrinkles. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> huh? 
I regretted it. I tried to switch it off and I couldn't. Uh oh. Yeah. So I was like, no, what was I thinking? And then, uh, and then now though, I mean, and then I thought, well, whatever, you know, it's like, even if I can't be taken out through assassination or through suicide or through um, stupid agreements, whatever, <laughs> right? at least I know that I'm going to die of old age, you know? So I, I became quite happy about it after that. <laughs> Because I was really keen. I mean, I was really, um, I had the energy that a lot of people do. I know you don't, but a lot of people that I work with or have worked with have of saying, um, I'm here to do a, a mission to serve the human species and to change the, the matrix and to, or to change, um, bring the frequency of the planet, the vibration of the planet up. Um, but as soon as I'm done, I'm out of here. Because right. I hate it here. I can't stand it here. This is so incompatible with who and what I am, my frequency. I hate every second of this place. Right. So that, there was a lot of that energy in me too, which I had to address because it's not a really, it's not going to cut it. Mm -mm. When you start to help. No. When you carry that energy, this is, I mean, individuals, people, even who are asleep, are highly, highly intuitive and highly aware and are connected to you because you are a human being. It doesn't matter where your soul evolved, you're in a human body and by and therefore That's you right. are a human being. You're part of the human collective. And people sense and know when you're not being genuine and in integrity. So if you make a video or write a book or or put in an article saying um, life is wonderful, you're powerful and you can create amazing things and we're shifting this planet and at the same time you're feeling I hate this. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. I can't stand it here. This very frequency vibration is horrible for me. I can't stand human beings. People can sense it, feel it, and you'll not get anywhere. Right? You know. No, I know. That's a t yeah. It's a real lack of what I would call purity. You know, pure, purity, what I think of as purity is uh, just purity of intent, where you know why you're doing what you're doing, and it's for... Uh, an authentic reason there's authenticity there's an authenticity thing isn't it because yeah. the people that i work with and i know their their intent is pure yeah uh, they are so pure in their intent to make this better yeah yeah and uh, it's just mm, go ahead sorry yeah it just doesn't cut it because their actual feelings are different well, mm -hmm. that and what happens when you're buying into that thing is you are actually being some sort of savior victim, right? Martyr. I'm here. Yep. A martyr. I'm here to save the planet, but I'm a victim of how horrible it is. Yes. That, Absolutely. That's, Got it. So what's that? That's playing another yeah, one of yeah. those yeah. matrix roles. <laughs> that's why I love you. You just got the right words and you point to this. thing. <laughs> The yeah, martyr <laughs> energy. They're embodying the martyr energy, which is completely opposite of the new paradigm. Well, yeah. and also, and, and it, and it also, that martyr energy is a choice to be in duality. Yes, it is. <laughs> a choice to be in separation. Yeah. I mean, there is a level of separation. And yes. This is sort of gets sort of deep, but there is a level of separ separation being in multiplicity. Yes. But the thing about being in multiplicity while still maintaining the the um, not just an idea, but a real sense of being part of the oneness, the the divine having an expression, mm -hmm. which is what I feel a soul. You know, a soul doesn't matter if they're like a soul that's like doing stupid things like killing people and all that kind of stuff but at a soul level i mean expressions of extreme separation right mm, yes yeah. but at a soul level souls know that they are and never have been completely separate from the divine they just are the divine in expression right yeah, yeah. so um so so there is a there is this thing of being in multiplicity but with the the knowledge of being an expression of source that's that no more disconnect kind mm -hmm. of experience but when you choose to play a role like be a martyr or victim or something you're choosing to be firmly landed in separation <laughs> right. yeah. and 
you know, and not with that not separation as multiplicity and expression of divinity, but separation of somehow being separate, yeah. therefore stuck in duality and that old <laughs> <Don't> story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel it, you know, and when I look at it, I mean, my advice or my seeing would be that's, that's some was that program of I hate it here I want to get out of here uh, or that desire was implanted after they came here by having the most horrendous experiences of this planet right on purpose I mean all the negative experiences they've had in this planet weren't to make them grow because they were already awake and aware and came in beautiful beings I don't know if you've seen newborn babies recently <laughs> but oh my god yeah. they're awake and they're aware and they're beautiful and open you know they're already aware of all those things and the experiences they've had of violence and cruelty and just vibrational violence in their field is to make them feel that they want to get out of here to make them ineffective mm. yeah so to me it's like drop the stories drop the whole stories about this place being and negative and nasty or not as good as and not interesting drop all those stories and just concentrate on that purity of who you are because that purity coming through is what makes the shift that's what it means embodying the new paradigm not right. an energy of yes i'm going to empower people and i'm going to help them or heal them but i hate it here <laughs> and if you do feel that be honest yeah. When you do make your videos, when you do make your YouTube saying, I'm in this space where um, I hate it here. <laughs> right? Um, You'll probably get a lot it. of likes on that. Yeah, and I'm working through it. But you know, while working through it, I came upon this tool that I've invented and I find it very helpful. And this is what it is. Mm. But then people can sense that you're being truthful and then they will hear the tools because the tools are not in. Um, in effect, it's just because you're feeling this, just that you can't reach people anymore because you're feeling the other stuff. Yeah. So I don't know. That's my that would be my advice towards anybody who feels that they have had enough and they want to leave the planet. I don't know about you. <laughs> what do you <laughs> What do you advise them to do? Well, I mean, you know that I don't feel that way. Yes, I'm, absolutely. I'm, <laughs> I know a lot of people who don't feel that way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I I think that it's just a I think maybe it's just a matter of recognizing that you've made the choice to be here and at this time when it's in a very trans transitional period mm -hmm. we've all made a choice to be here and for a good reason you know we're not stupid we're not uh, uh, masochists who just choose to do painful things there's a reason and uh, I don't know that's what I usually I find that that helping when I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, discovering really what's really there and what's the real reason for why you're taking a certain action um, puts it into a different perspective because everything can be viewed from the more expanded perspective, mm -hmm. even really difficult experiences. Right. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You know, it's really cute right now. That little butterfly behind you is coming out <laughs> from your head. Hello. <laughs> yeah, the butterfly hello, and the butterfly. Buddha can say hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Butterfly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, there's so much going on right now. We could talk for hours and hours. But I know. <laughs> probably should. I know. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for this beautiful and insightful conversation. Oh, well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to read your website again. It's called emanationofpresence.org. And also remind people that you do sessions, right? You still do personal sessions? Yeah, I do. I do. And um, you're the, our go to person from Work With Me Now to do sessions with, your official go to go person. Um, and also, you are um, offered um, like classes online with uh, meditations and things. You have a the uh, emanation program. Of, what what is the new program called? I didn't write that down. 
Um, but yeah, so the new program that's actually starting this weekend mm -hmm. is um, Cellular Illumination. Cellular Illumination. A Journey of Conscious Embodiment. And Love I'm it. Excited oh, about it. Look, I'm my hair standing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's 10 weeks, but and it's like um, two calls a month, but we're finishing in the middle of December because we don't want to knock up against Christmas time. Right. And what if the person comes in, say, three weeks into the program? What, um, are they okay to come in three weeks Oh, in? yeah. It's not a problem because all the calls are always recorded. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll, they'll have access to the online forum. Okay. Go. All that oh, so you come to the online forum. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I got nice. that idea from a certain friend of mine. <laughs> very good. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, nice. oh, well, thank you so much for having me. It's been just lovely chatting. <laughs>